Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be covering motor hesitation upon acceleration from zero RPM. Now you may have saw in the title of this video, we use the word cogging. Cogging is not gonna be the actual thing that we talk about in this video. That I have a complete video on to go in full detail and at length in order to cover exactly what cogging is. I'll leave that link in the description below. You may be a little bit surprised by this, but I wanted to make sure that I put cogging into the title of the video because this is a term that is commonly used in the RC community. However, I didn't want someone looking for the solution to not be able to find the video. We are gonna go ahead and figure out exactly how we eliminate this sort of hesitation issue within our system or at the very least we how we can improve it if we don't want to make any significant changes let's go ahead and understand why we experiencing this motor hesitation well this motor hesitation really comes into play when we're talking about sensorless brushless motors a sensorless brushless motor is exactly as it sounds it's a motor that does not have sensors within it and that is important because the speed control needs to know the position of that motor shaft in order to provide it with power if it doesn't know where that motor shaft is in relative position from 0 to 360 degrees it is going to be very difficult for that speed control to get in sync with the motor without having sensors on the motor the speed control has to figure out the position of that motor shaft now the way that is accomplished is by sending power first to the motor the motor then reacts it moves several degrees and then as it does that it sends voltage back to the speed control that voltage is red and then it's understood at a more accurate level as to the position of that motor shaft it may not be 100 percent locked yet in sync but it can do that the next time it sends power it can constantly repeats this process until it syncs completely with the motor. Now you can imagine as it's doing this and trying to figure it out, it's going to be, you know, jittery or it's going to have that hesitation that we see. That's exactly what's happening within these systems. That motor is trying to figure out the relative position in order to get in sync with the speed control and then carry on full operation. Now when we talk about this issue, we are really only considering a very small range of speed. Typically what I've said in past videos it's very low speed well actually it's extremely low speed low speed I did not emphasize how low it actually is we're talking zero rpm the car does not move and all we need to do is just get it moving until it locks in sync and you will know that if you have a radio control vehicle how slow you can go until that speed control and motor are completely in sync you could also see that right at the beginning of the video you heard that hesitation of the motor trying to get in sync with the speed control and then once it did then smooth operation carried on carried forward the question then becomes, how do we fully eliminate this hesitation issue? Well, we can eliminate the hesitation issue by moving to a censored motor. I have here with me a complete sensorless system. So here we have the motor. It has a three cables coming out of it like you would typically see. And then at the very back of it, you also have this data cable. This data cable here goes to the speed control and provides it with sensor-based information of where that shaft is on the motor in its relative to position. Then it knows exactly where that motor shaft is and all of this hesitation is completely and fully eliminated with this type of system. If that's what you want to do, you can go ahead and completely eliminate the hesitation upon acceleration by moving to this censored type setup. Now, I have to admit, I only run this vehicle as a censored vehicle. All the rest of my applications are all sensorless. You don't need a censored motor in every single application of a radio controlled vehicle. In fact, what we're going to be talking about a lot today is radio controlled cars, trucks, buggies, and that sort of thing, land vehicles. It's not common that you're going to experience an issue with this motor hesitation to a degree that it affects you greatly. If you have a radio controlled airplane, boat, helicopter, quadcopter, those sorts of things when you have the hesitation upon startup once that propeller is spinning you're good to go you do not have and encounter those situations again uh, so really we're talking specifically an area where you have more load occurring at zero speed 
a radio control car it has to go and move the vehicle from zero speed that is a load and it's a little more difficult to get that car rolling as it's also trying to figure out the relative position so there you have it that's exactly what's happening when we're referring to the so-called hesitation within our system you can eliminate it by using that censored package that censored system that is a big commitment now what happens if we wanted to you know, approve upon the hesitation and not commit to completely changing out and swapping our system. Well, we can go through six points that are going to help improve the hesitation that you experience upon the acceleration from zero speed. The first one that we can talk about is any sort of binding that occurs within your radio control car. Now, the way that you can do that is you can go ahead, grab one of your radio control cars, and you want to go and check for key areas where you can find binding. So in this particular case, what I do is I want to go and rotate one wheel. I want to check for any type of binding, any sort of resistance that doesn't feel normal. Usually a binding occurs in one spot or several spots and it's not continuous. Also, what you want to do is you rotate the wheel around and you want to check for any of that that we're talking about. What we're doing here is we're operating the shaft, we're operating that CV joint, we're actually turning the entire differential as well and same with the other side of this axle. I go ahead, turn this wheel forward and you see that the other side is turning in reverse. That means everything in this whole rear end is rotating and I do not feel binding. You do the exact same thing with the front wheel in order to check if there's any issues there. Now what you want to do is hold one of the wheels. So I'm going to hold this one fixed and I'm going to rotate one of the wheels here. Now I'm looking for binding as well. So here I do not feel anything that is abnormal. Everything feels smooth. I don't have any binding issues in this radio control vehicle. Now the reason it's important to check for any sort of extra load on the motor in terms of your binding or something that's happening there in the driveline is because any additional load that that motor has to turn when it's not in sync with the speed control is going to make that synchronization process more difficult for that system. If it has to turn a load, you can imagine now it's got to turn that low plus it's got to get in sync that is going to be a struggle for the system which brings us to our next point if you are using high gearing that is also going to be more difficult for your system to get in sync with the motor speed control now the high gearing is really what those guys are doing when they're trying to achieve very high rates of speed if you're using a sensorless motor in that type of application you will probably see a lot of uh, hesitation on startup right as that vehicle is trying to get from zero rpm to that in sync speed a way that you would be able to correct that is by going with either lower gearing or what i do with my high speed radio control vehicle is i actually give it a shove first just so i can eliminate that sort of uh, getting in sync speed i give it a shove i probably give it a good push so it hits maybe five to ten kilometers an hour and then once i hit the throttle it's bang right in sync almost right away and the reason is because when i give it a shove that motor is already providing that emf that back emf to the speed control and as soon as it starts to provide power it already knows relatively where that rotor is in position now the third item that we can talk about is the battery pack itself if your battery pack cannot dump the necessary amounts of power in order to complete the synchronization process you may experience more hesitation upon acceleration from zero speed now the reason why it's important is because that speed control is going to have to push a lot of power to the motor in order to initialize that synchronization period when your battery doesn't provide enough power you will definitely experience more hesitation upon acceleration if you happen to use some of the older nickel metal hydride battery packs that go into the radio controlled applications and you also have a sensorless power system you may experience quite a bit of this type of hesitation if you want to eliminate it either get better battery packs or move completely up to a lithium polymer solution if you go with a lipo solution lipos can deliver a lot more power than the nickel metal hydrides and you will then begin to be able to pass the power from the speed control to the motor in order to complete that synchronization process more effectively and more efficiently now another area that you can look at is your brushless motor. If you have something like a two pole brushless motor, stepping up to a four pole brushless motor is and has the potential to help with this type of stuttering and hesitation that we experience while accelerating. Now the reason why stepping up from a two pole to a four pole motor is important is because we end up going from 
having a certain amount of communication with the two pole for every revolution to an increased level of communication. There's more steps of interaction between that speed control and motor. And that provides us with better resolution in order to synchronize easier. Now taking this route also depends on the quality of the motor. You can go ahead and get a six or eight pole motor and be in a worse condition, worse scenario with hesitation if that motor is not of good quality. It needs to be of good quality to make sure that it is actually working. I used a six pole motor in a brushless boat and the synchronization was actually quite terrible that it would take me two seconds or so to get that motor fired up and rotating. And you know, you must also consider that there's very, very little load when you're operating a propeller at very low speeds. Now another area to check is the connection points between your speed control and also your brushless motor. So here we'll get our application out again here, the radio control buggy. And I wanna go ahead and look at the speed control and make sure that all three of my wires coming from the motor are connected well. Now the reason why it's important to make sure you have a good connection is very similar to what we talked about before. There's a lot of power being pulled when you're trying to get the motor in sync. When you're pulling all this power, you wanna make sure you have the least amount of resistance in your connections so this power ends up inside the motor and then can get back in terms of EMF, back EMF, back to our speed control. The last area that I wanted to talk about is our driving style. Now this one is not something totally necessary that is up to you to fix. You don't need to do this, but there are certain things that you can maybe get from this. If you're trying to operate a rock crawler, which generally goes from zero kilometers an hour, of zero speed to very, very small amounts of speed, and you're constantly stopping a lot, this is going to put a lot of stress on this whole synchronization process. You're gonna always try and get that motor in sync with the speed control if you are always stopping and in fact if you're at very slow speeds trying to cl climb a rock it's going to be very difficult for the speed control to get in sync with the motor and be able to smoothly climb on top of that rock there are certain applications that don't really work so well with a sensorless motor one thing that I try and do is I try not to stop in an area where I'm up against a rock and the next time I hit the throttle, I'm gonna to have to get over top of the rock as well as get the motor and speed control in sync. This is just by habit. It's not something that you need to rely upon. Your system should definitely handle it. Now one bonus tip that I can hand out there too is that if you are trying to accelerate from stop, using a little bit more throttle will also help eliminate some of that hesitation. If you apply more throttle, you'll be able to send more power to that motor in order to improve the hesitation and synchronization period there. Now it's important to also note that you should not need to use like 50% throttle in order to eliminate the hesitation. It should be much less than 50% throttle on a linear scale to eliminate that hesitation hesitation or have very little of it at the zero kilometer an hour mark. If you are experiencing some sort of hesitation upon acceleration, try and use one of the six things that we've talked about in order to eliminate that the best we can. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you do, and please hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next week.